I work for SUSE, but this is not limited to SUSE. Um, this is in general, in, in IT and in computer science, there is at the moment really a demand for, um, for good trained um, students who want to start to work professional. So the next few minutes I would like to talk in, in general about Google Summer of Code. So this is um, a program founded and um, paid by Google. They started it, um, I think, 15 or in 2004, so 13 years ago. Um, this is so. Let me, so the the main idea was from Google. Um, they wanted to bring more people working on open open source, um, but they also saw that some or most students don't have time to dedicate um, to dedicated work on open source um, because they also have to to work and um, to earn some money um, so they needed to work for instance in a Mc McDonald's or something because the the main uh, headline was back then flip bits not burgers so they wanted to stop that and get or pay students to work the like an internship full-time three months only on, on open source software um, so that was how it started. Um, so it's founded by Google, and they also s or they have the budget for it. They have um, this year, I think, more than one thousand students, and as a student, you get around five five thousand dollars. So it's really a lot of money involved from Google. Um, of course, they also have their own goals, so it's they want to be close to open source um, organizations. Um, they it's probably part of their hiring process, so they also have goals. But in general, um, this is one of the best programs and one of the first programs um, what was established. So, who can participate in general? You have to be uh, at least eighteen years old. You have to be en enrolled in a in a university. Um, you sh you should or you have to be eligible to work in the country you live at the moment, um, and this year they also introduced um, that you only can participate twice in Google Summer of Code, and that was the main reason because they wanted to get the student to be a mentor. Um, so you participate one or two times, and the third time you should at latest be a mentor. So they really want what what we did, for instance, or what I introduced in the beginning, that um, you be a men you be a student, and then the next year you be a mentor because you're experienced enough, you're a part of the community, so you should really teach the next generation already. So and that was one of the reasons because before um, you could participate three times or four times even, and this year they introduced that it's only allowed once. Um, so some official numbers, so they. Um, they have more than 12,000 students since 2004 from 104 different countries. Uh, the most students come from India and United States. Um, the United States makes sense because it's yeah it started by by Google and Google is a company from the states. Um, for for India, it's um, yeah. I, I don't know the reason, but Germany is a little bit surprisingly because it's summer and it usually collides with the German curriculum in university. So I'm really surprised that Germany is on the third place. Um, and you also see that there are 30 million lines of code produced in Google Summer of Code, which is quite a lot. Um, so this is our history. So we already participated, I think, in 2005, but I don't have numbers from these years. But um, so I have numbers back to 2009, which means we really had a lot of students. So in, in 2011 and 2014, we had f uh, 14 students, which is quite a lot. The last two years, um, we had only four and five. And in 2015, we didn't get selected. Um, so the reason why it dropped is basically we don't have enough mentors and we don't have enough projects. So uh, it's not that Google doesn't like us anymore, it's just we only applied for five um, and six slots. So 
That is, that is the main reason behind it. And also since last year we collaborate with FOSTEM, thanks to Stella. Um, last year we had one student from FOSTEM and this year we have two students from FOSTEM working also on the open source event manager. So this is basically the application um, you all already saw with the schedule for the conference and for the call for papers and everything. Um, so this is also this year we have four students working on this project. This is, we have six mentors and four students, I think. So it's, this is one of our uh, main project or one of the biggest project what we have in Google Sum of Code. Um, then another project is Yang Outs. This is a video conferencing tool. Um, Anchor and Emo started in the Hack Week. So we have two students this year working on this project. Last year we had one. And the last project we have this year is a travel support program that is for community members who want to apply to get travel support um, when they want to go to a conference, for instance. Um, this is also a Ruby and Rails application, and we have one student working on this. Um, yeah, but what was interesting is we also had, some, for instance, a Portos project and Docker project. Um, but it seems like it was not that appealing for the students, so we didn't get many applications, or we didn't get applications at all for this project. Uh, it seems like they are too enterprisey, so it's not that interesting for for students. Um, they are more interested in doing Rails, or I don't know. That was it surprised me a little bit. Um, so I also would like to <laughs> I would. I also like to thank the board and Andrew because um, this year we also have two students again from Google Summer of Code here in, at the conference and um, the travel support program gave them some money to come here and we had two days ago on Friday afternoon we had a GSOC meetup so we talked about in person what we want to do this summer um, how we want to work together um, and that was really great because I think that is really important to meet each other to talk in person and not only via email or ISC. Um, so one one thing what they changed this year, what is um, or what, what Google changed, what was dis discussed a lot last year was uh, they changed the payment. So they had before every student got five thousand five hundred dollars for the whole for the whole summer. And this year they changed it um, based on your location. So they introduced um, purchase exchange rate. So that means based on your location, you get more or less money. For instance, in the United States, you get the whole amount, which is 5,500 euros. Um, if you're, for instance, in, in um, India located, you get less money. So at least you get 2,500, I think. Um, but yeah, that... Um, the main idea was to get more students or more students out of the budget. Um, but there was really a lot of discussions about this. Um, but I found it really interesting that Google decided for that. And they announced it last year at the um, Google Sum of Code Summit. Um, and yeah, there, there were really long discussions about this. Um, but it's not a final decision. They just wanted to try this out this year. And if it won't work, they will change next year again or just leave it as, as it is. That depends. So it was not a final decision. That was just something what they wanted to try out. Um, another project or program what we participate was is Race Girls and Race Girls Summer of Code. So this is very similar to Google Summer of Code, but the main idea was to bring underrepresented groups more into open source communities. Um, so we also have one student from last year or two years ago? Yeah. Last year, yeah. So um, two years ago, that was the first time that we participated in Race Girls Summer of Code. And that was basically the reason we started or we, we found out about this program was because we didn't get selected for Google Summer of Code. And Hen and I sit together and talked what we could do instead. And then we found out about this great program and then we applied and got selected. And we are also sponsor, OpenSUSE sponsor of Race Girls Summer of Code. Last year we were bronze sponsor and this year we are silver sponsor. Um, 
So we asked the board if they would like to spend some money to help them, because compared to Google, that is, they don't have a budget. Google just has several million dollars to have a budget, and then they found 1,000 students. They have a fundraising campaign every year to get first money, and based on how much money they raise, they say, okay, we can select 10 students or 15. So compared to Google Summer of Code, this is really a small uh, program. Um, so this year, they really got a lot of applications. They had 190, which was um, double as last year. And we didn't get selected this year. But yeah, it was basically because they had so many applications um, that and it didn't match with the fundraising. So they needed to decide which, um, which organizations and which um, teams they want to accept. So... Um, this is this is a location, so it's also uh, distributed or all around the world program. Um, it's but what's the main difference also is that they are teams. So they are teams of two students working together. In Google Sum of Code, it's only one student, um, and they they are also paired with mentors and um, some administrator who help them to develop. Um, so, three years ago, I think, or two years ago, we started the 101.OpenSUSE project, which is basically a website where we collected all the data if you want to be a mentor or a mentee. Um, we collect all the projects what we have. Um, so, it's basically, it's based on GitHub. So, you open a GitHub issue, describe your project in it with, um, with a mentor who is responsible for it, and then it appears on the OpenSUSE 101 page. Um, that is completely new. Yeah, two years ago, after we didn't get selected for Google Sum of Code, we just decided we need to change something and we need to make it more appealing, and then we started this. Um, we also collected some mentor guidelines so if you're interested to be a mentor then go there and we um, sat together and wrote down some um, yeah some guideline or some some um, best practices if you want to start um, to be a mentor and this is my last slide so we want you if you if you're interested in being a mentor then come to me talk to me um, we would really like to have more projects and more students, but that is really important that we get more mentors because uh, at the moment um, we have some mentors would, uh, which do two projects, which is really a lot of work. It's nothing what you do um, in a little bit on the side. It's really you need to dedicate some time for that. Um, so if you're interested, approach me or ask questions now because this is basically my... Last sl slide now, and I would like to encourage you if you have questions, then. Right. Um, I've got a question regarding so the projects you've presented here are mostly targeted at developing a final product, a cool tool, a fancy new th uh, application that you can use. Do you also need or take people as mentors who have projects which are more of theory related like developing new algorithms developing new um, let's say clustering techniques process mining techniques or is this too theoretical for you um, so for google sum of code it means that there needs code involved so you need to course, write yeah. code um, then it's fine so it's for instance there's often a question if documentation is fine um, documentation is not included, for instance. It's, it should be part of the project, but only a de dedicated documentation project wouldn't be included in Google Sum of Code, for instance. But this is um, the requirement what Google gives us. Um, so if code is involved, it's fine. So, yeah, as one example, let's say you've got um, bug tracking uh, or you have, you have a bug tracking data and you want to mine some patterns out of it, and someone comes up, hey, we can set up a project and develop a tool which has some fancy new algorithm which detects patterns in, in this bug tracking uh, data that you have. Yeah. That would be perfectly fine. Cool, yeah. then maybe we get Perfect. to you. Thank you.
Yes, I, I, in my Google Summer of Code project, I did something very similar because I examined the data of the OpenSUSE conference. How many attendees and how likely it is that an attendee comes again and stuff like that. More questions? Okay, then, thank you.